Hello and welcome to Brainy Gardener. Today it is all about how to grow and care for the garden mum. Garden mum, also known as the daisy mum and florist mum, is a popular perennial plant. It is one of the most widespread plants in the family Asteraceae. Native to East Asia, its introduction to the Western world didn't happen until the 19th century. Since then, garden mum has grown incredibly popular for its striking appearance and fast growth. In the United States, garden mum is used mainly as an ornamental plant. But this herb has been traditionally valued for centuries in Asia to treat ailments such as inflammation. A recent study done by NASA confirmed their findings that some common airborne toxins could be purified using garden mum. Although these plants are typically grown outdoors rather than indoors, they're still worth considering if you want cleaner air around your home. Garden mum thrives in full sun but can handle some shade. Flowering will be most profuse if these plants are grown in full sun. However, in warm climates, the plants often appreciate some shade during the heat of the afternoon. The plant should receive at least six hours of sunlight a day and more if possible. The best time to give them sunlight is morning or afternoon, except in southern climates, where it likes some protection from the mid-afternoon sun. You will need to water your potted plant often. Three times a week is considered standard practice. Keep its soil consistently moist without allowing it to become soggy. These plants tend to wilt and die if the soil is too dry. So, check the top layer of soil often for moisture levels with a finger. Then, water the soil directly and avoid getting the flowers and leaves wet. The ideal temperature range for garden mum is between 50 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Some cultivars require even more temperature management, but the flowering time for these plants remains largely unaffected by temperature fluctuations. Temperatures outside this range can cause the flowers to lose their color, shape, and size. At much lower temperatures, the flowers will start to close, while they will start to wilt the higher it goes. These plants can tolerate most conditions and are not fussy about humidity. But if you want to be on the safe side, keep them away from arid areas as they may wilt or die, although this is rare. Garden mums and pots are greedy for fertilizers, especially when freshly planted. So feed these plants once every month with any standard fertilizer, and you'll be on your way to success. Garden mum can be propagated in several ways by division, seeds, and cuttings. The fastest, easy, and straightforward method is through division. Divide the plants that have grown for at least two years. Younger plants will not have a sufficient root system to survive. Divide when plants are at least six inches tall. Replant each at least 18 inches apart. Cuttings are also an effective method to propagate these plants. Cut a stem that is at least four inches long. Dip the cut end into a rooting hormone and plant it in a container filled with potting soil. Wait around four weeks for the plant to grow, then transplant it outside. Mums can be grown from seeds as well, although it's preferable to use store-bought seeds. The plant that emerges if you try to grow it from seeds taken from your plants could not be true to the parent. Garden mum is best suited for soil with plenty of humus, fertile soil, and consistently moist conditions. When repotting, use a pot a bit larger than the current pot. However, you can go for even bigger containers if the need arises. The pot should also have holes at the bottom to allow proper water drainage. The soil should be well drained and you should add a balanced fertilizer before and to facilitate the potting process. Don't disturb the roots when repotting. Garden mums are toxic for humans, dogs, cats, and horses. Both the flowers and the leaves can cause dermatitis by touch. Don't let your pet sniff or eat the flowers as they can cause damage to these animals. Garden mums are susceptible to aphids, spider mites, and thrips. Other insects like capsid bugs, earwigs, leaf miners, nematodes, and white flies can also sometimes be a problem. You can control these pests by using pesticides or insecticidal soaps. Adjust the dose depending on the severity of the infestation.